It is my personal pleasure to introduce David Tamayo, who is founder and president of Hispanic American Freethinkers, also known as HAFRI. David also serves on the board of the Freedom From Religion Foundation. HAFRI is the first and only Latino nonprofit educational organization of its kind. Its mission is to serve as a resource and support for all Hispanic freethinkers. David is Chief Information Officer for a large aerospace engineering firm in Washington, D.C. He sponsors and assists 10 cybersecurity teams at Langley High School, which compete in the U.S. Air Force National Cyber Patriot Competition. He is Vice President and Founder of the Hispanic Business and Technology Council, a nonprofit that educates young Hispanics to become IT leaders. David is the organizer of the Hafri High School Outreach Mentor Program to Latino and immigrant students, teaching critical thinking skills and career planning. As special counsel to Hafri, I am not biased. I present to you my friend and fellow dog lover, president of Hispanic American Freethinkers, Thank dog for David Tamayo. So, so before, oh, that's what I was looking for. <laughs> okay. All right, so they're working on the monitor. We'll, we'll start in a minute. I'll make sure I get my water, get all the stuff uh, ready. So uh, in today's talk, uh, you see the title there, AI. Uh, when I was, the first time I heard the, the, the term AI, uh, I, it was a long time ago at my uncle's farm, about 21 years, I was about 21 years old, and uh, he kept saying things like, without AI, where, where, you know, the farm is not gonna survive, uh, AI is really difficult, AI this, AI that, and uh, I thought, wow, you know, I just graduated in computer science from George Washington University. I uh, uh, haven't seen a single computer in the farm, and he keeps talking about AI, what? And so I have something to say before we get started, and that is that, it, that this presentation is not about artificial insemination. <laughs> <laughs> it's about artificial intelligence. Now, if you are interested in artificial insemination, I think there's another conference down the, down the hall. But uh, that was, uh, that was the, the, uh, the issue that I had to deal with in, um, uh, in, in coming up with the name. Now, let me, uh, it doesn't matter if I do a presentation on AI, on economics, on anything like that, I always get the uh, same question. Well, should I call you Latino, uh, Hispanic, Mexican, uh, Latine, what? And, and the Mexican, by the way. And, uh, I, and I always tell people, look, a lot, all those, a majority of those things are just a distraction from the real issues of education and poverty and religiosity and all these other issues. So I don't care, you know, and, and so for the purpose of this presentation, we can, you know, I'm gonna be using interchangeably Hispanic and Latino to mean kind of the same thing, and, uh, and, and I don't care what you call me, so long as you call me. That's really what, you know, the inclusion part on things. Now, many of you may not, uh, I'd like to take this opportunity to let everyone know that uh, Hispanic Americans, we are 62 million as of last year in this country. That's one in five people are Hispanic. And th uh, therefore, uh, we need to uh, keep that in mind, th that, that so many people we need, you know, we need to talk to and we need to ensure that they're getting uh, the education that we need. Education is the biggest contributor to secularism, so we want to make sure we do that. Another thing I want you to know, just as a factoid, is that more people speak Spanish in the United States than any other country in the world, except for Mexico. So there are more Spanish speakers here in this country than in Colombia, than in Chile, Argentina, or, or even Spain. Uh, something to keep in mind. And there's no official language in, in the United States, by the way. And so I like to tell people that if you don't have a, uh, a Latino in your family yet, you will pretty soon. Uh, <laughs> so might as well start 
getting uh, used to that a little bit. So now, what does all of this have to do with the price of tea in China, right? Uh, about four years ago, I received a letter from uh, one of the high schools that we work with, and the letter said, uh, we, Mr. Tamayo, we'd like you to come and talk to us about, the, uh, uh, about what jobs, uh, what careers Hispanics uh, can, uh, can have. And I saw that, and I shook my hand. I said, what the hell? How about all of them? We could, you know, Hispanics can do any job. And yes, the teacher apologized and all of that uh, later on, but uh, it had, uh, it, 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 I figured, okay, I'm gonna do a presentation as Hispanic instead of talking about all the terrible things and, and, and the religion in the community and all of that. I figured I'll do uh, one on artificial intelligence since I do that for a living in, in, at work and uh, I work with technology. And, and so we'll start here with the most important question uh, today. So I don't know if you saw this in the news this morning that uh, normally I'd be looking at the monitor there. So I don't know if you saw this in the news uh, this morning, but uh, the uh, Carl Sagan Center for Research at SETI, it's a real place, uh, they uh, have an alien intruder uh, detection system that says that aliens are going to be here in 29 years. So the question is, should humans do something about it? Well, the answer is, that's a stupid question. Of course, we gotta do something about it. You know, are they coming here to work with us? Are they coming here to eat us? Are they coming here to give us anal probes? What are they here for? So, it's an important question. Now, keep in mind that, really, uh, it's, uh, it's fake news, of course. The, uh, the center is real, but the, the news is false. AI, artificial intelligence, is coming. And it is already here to a certain degree. And a lot of luminaries have said, this is dangerous. You see the quote there from Stephen Hawking, this could be the best thing or the worst thing for humanity. So keep in mind as I talk to some of these things, as I go through some of these things. Now the problem with AI is that computers, computing power, uh, the, the, the uh, memory, all of that has had exponential growth for the last 50 years. Now, exponential growth, most of, many of you would say, yeah, yeah, I know what that is. It's the little curve going. Well, let me give, just let, put it in perspective. If you take 30 linear steps, you cross the street. If you take 30 exponential steps, you go around the earth 26 times. And that's how fast memory and, and, and things are in computers are in the computing power. The problem with, with exponential is that by the time you, by observation, you realize that it is, something is exponential, it's already too late. By the way, COVID, exponential. All right, so the problem that AI has is that it's cool. It's got a cool factor. Wow, my Roomba goes underneath and it maps my room. And oh, you got cars now that you can call them from the parking lot and they'll come in a rainy day and pick you up. This has got a cool factor, and so we're like the proverbial frog, right? We've just not seen the dangers that this is bringing up. So before we go on to some of those, let's talk about uh, really briefly define some things. And I'm going to keep it really brief because they told me I, could, I said I wanted four hours, and they said you got 20 minutes at most, so we'll see. Uh, so intelligence. Let's just define intelligence as the ability to process information. Very simple, okay? And then... We know that a lump of matter between our ears, that that is intelligence, is a bunch of neurons, a bunch of stuff in there. Uh, and, but what's critical about that is patterns. So keep that in mind. Patterns is really what makes the intelligence. It's not so much the stuff that it's made out of. And, and so intelligence, I would argue, and I will prove it to you in a minute, that intelligence is independent of the substrate, it's independent of the material that is intelligent, whether it's a computer chip or, or, or a brain, you know, wet, whether it's hardware or wetware. And also keep in mind that all the atoms in your body are not the same atoms that were there 10 years ago. So you shed skin and all of that and you eat and it, it replaces just about everything in your body, but, what, but still you're the same person that you're more or less about 10 years ago and, and someone sees you and your ideas and all of that because of the patterns. Your mental patterns are still there. That's what makes you. And so we could almost argue that uh, life is the ability, again, very simplified. E each one of those things, you can write books about it. 
But we can say that, uh, that life is the ability to process information while retaining that complexity. And of course, sex. You know, we just gotta throw sex in there. Um, we're trying to, I need to look at the slides to see what the next one is. There you go. And so we can say, is artificial intelligence artificial life to be determined, right? Now, this is the stages of artificial, so artificial intelligence really means non-biological intelligence. So that's sort of our definition. And right now, there are three stages of, of uh, this type of, of artificial intelligence. Stage three is the, uh, the machine learning, your Alexas, your, your devices that are learning from you. And uh, that's been all put together by supercomputers. And eventually, I think, and many people think that they'll become conscious at some point. So, yes, you're all skeptics. I'm going to say, all right, prove it to me, right? Well, all matter in the universe is made out of two things, everything, two things. So it's a computer chip or a brain made out of two things, and that is quarks and leptons. Quarks are the parts that make up the neutrons and protons, and leptons, electrons, and other things. But for our purposes, everything's made out of two things. And that, so, so th this, when I say everything, I mean brains and computer chips, all made out of the same thing. Computing, the ability to process information, it's one function. One computer function does all the computing in the world, keeping aside quantum computers and other stuff, just to keep it basic. And you see the table there. I mean, anyone reading that table can understand it. It's very easy. That logic can compute anything, uh, and, and thus. And then we have the, the neuron, the very simple cell, one cell that by itself doesn't do much. It fires a one or a zero, you can argue. And we have about 100 billion of those. And you put them together, and boom, you got intelligence. You got uh, the, your ability to think and, and understand what I'm saying over here. And so again, it's the pattern that makes the brain intelligent. You take a person, you scramble their brain, and they're no longer intelligent because you scramble their, uh, their, their, their patterns. So really quickly, now, all my slides have a lot of writing because I want you to be able to review this later and look at it and everything. Feel free to email me and questions and talk about things. I love this kind of stuff. And so AI, will it create greater unemployment? Yes and no. For every technology, that's the case. Uh, what you're seeing there are actual self-driving trucks. There are already self-driving trucks on the road. You just don't know about it, and most of them have babysitters. Uh, but yes, it, the, the, it will save lives. It will uh, help people not get killed or, or hurt, but it will destroy jobs. Again, positive and negative. Does it produce uh, inequalities? Oh, yes. That uh, news you see there is recent, and it says, look, uh, automation has really destroyed, 70% of the destroying of the middle class is because of automation. Will that stop automation? Nope, it'll continue to move forward. So the problem with uh, automation with robots is that they don't pay taxes, no social security tax. So less and less people paying into the social security tax, for example. They work 24 seven, they don't ask for a raise, et cetera, et cetera. So the competition with humans is, is real. It changes, you know, AI is changing our humanity. How many of you have seen the gap chest, right? Uh, we wanna make sure you're not a computer. Fill in this weird, text in your, in your thing, it, yeah, it's, uh, you can talk, to, sometimes you, people on the phone or you think is a person, it turns out it's a computer. So, and, and then of course, all social media. Social media, you, each one of us is the product. They know you better than you know yourself. That's why they can target you so well and they're selling you to other companies uh, as that target. Uh, there is, it does, right now, there's still what I call artificial stupidity. Uh, and that is, you know, we've got to be careful about the things that we do. Uh, if you tell, uh, if you give a computer uh, instructions that are not very clear, uh, like make everybody happy, make, go and give everybody a lobotomy, and we'll all be drooling very happy, but it's not really what we meant. So we have to be very careful about that kind of stuff. Now, a lot of uh, organizations, courts, uh, all kinds of, you know, the banks, they have decided that they wanted to do, uh, to do good, and they got AIs to do loan applications to eliminate discrimination and all of that. But again, recent news, what you see there, uh, AI systems have turned out to be racist, uh, sexist, and biased in, in, in just about every field. And, and the reason is simple, because 
you know, it, it's garbage in and garbage out. The AIs learn from experience, they learn from history, they learn from the data, and yes, we are a society that is racist, sexist, and biased, and so these systems turn out to be the same way. So we have to be uh, careful about that. And then we, as computers become more and more, we, and, and to the point that they become uh, super AIs, uh, the God problem, the, God, the evil God problem, uh, basically, where the, we, we, we are irrelevant to the system. And to me, that's even worse, because imagine a computer system that will say, uh, you know, I, I keep rusting, let's just eliminate oxygen, and our rust problem will go away, not caring at all that we humans are the little ants that are being paved over by that road. So that is uh, something that we have to watch out. Uh, security, AI and security, Again, you look at that uh, headline uh, at the bottom. Keep that in mind for, for uh, uh, the next slide. But uh, security, the enemies of the country are attacking us with AIs. We are defending ourselves with AIs, and I'll never admit that we're attacking with AIs. Uh, the thing that, one thing that is really, really scary, if you don't know about this, Google deep fakes. It's very scary. And uh, it's, it's, a, it's a way of creating videos that look as authentic as any, uh, as any video of people saying and doing anything. And so you can no longer look at a video and say, yeah, it was in a video because you, you don't know. Uh, all right, we can't talk about AI without talking about the singularity. So if you remember one word today, just you can tell your friends, yeah, I know everything about AI. Uh, let's talk about the singularity. Uh, singularity is this uh, hypothesis that we're, that our systems are going to continue to get smarter and smarter and smarter, and it'll get to the point that uh, they'll, be, they'll, they'll be creating their own systems, and now we have a runaway uh, intelligence system, where we become sort of, the, the, the system becomes the human and we become the chicken uh, at that level, that you can try to teach a chicken trigonometry, it's never going to learn it, and it'll be the same way uh, that way. So it's some, this is... Uh, it's not an if, it's a when, and uh, some people think it's as early as 2045 when we'll have a, a computer that can create another computer. Uh, some people say, no, it'll be 2100, but anyway, singularity. Now, don't get me wrong, there are lots of good stuff. A study of Alzheimer's is, is being conducted with AI. Uh, the, uh, we use uh, robots. The one in the right uh, there is being used in Japan to clean up the nuclear accident over there, so no humans are being harmed. You send out this, this uh, and, 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 and robots and AIs are everywhere. All of you that flew over here, about three minutes of that flight was a pilot. The rest was a computer. So that's something to uh, keep in mind. And, uh, and so let me try to connect things with religion a little bit. Uh, by the way, every picture you see there was created by an AI. None of it is real. That dog is not real, never, has never existed. The, the painting, the butterfly, all of that is created by an AI. Uh, so yeah, a little bit scary. So I, I hope that AI does have an effect on religion, obviously. Uh, there are companies right now that are trying to come up with something called the artificial moral reasoning and that is to try to put morality into machines. So if a self-driving car says, I'm gonna crash, I'm gonna have to kill somebody, the typical, of course, the typical scenario, two 80-year-old people there, a nine-year-old boy there, which one gets it, uh, the, com the computer is gonna have to make those decisions. Now, every aspect of, the I, I'm hoping that this will touch every aspect of theology. And so the next couple of slides, I have questions for you to ask theologians, you know, the doctors in theology, and, and, and have them see what kinds of things in relating to, to AI. Now, keep in mind that uh, theology will re keep reinventing itself, and we saw that when Galileo proved that we were in the center of the universe, when uh, Darwin came out and, and showed evolution, they just evolved, you know, evol the evolution evolved. All right, um, so AI questions to ask. You know, will intelligent machines have a soul? You know, keep in mind that these same theologians were the ones that said that Native Americans didn't have souls and we could go kill them all. Or that, you know, you could grab people from Africa and enslave them because they didn't have souls. So, you know, uh, these are the same people that in vitro fertilization, they say, oh yeah, those children, we created that life in a, in a Petri dish, but uh, yeah, they have souls also. So we gotta remind of, of those things when these machines become 
uh, persons, if you will. Uh, if you encode the human brain, will that be, uh, will that encoding become, encode the soul also? And this is a very scary quote that, that I, I'm gonna read. I don't see Christ's redemption limited to human beings. It's, rede uh, it's a redemption of all creation. It's redemption of creation, even AI. If AI is autonomous, we should encourage it to uh, participate in Christ's redemptive purposes, et cetera, et cetera. In other words, pa pastors are already thinking, hey, once that my Alexa becomes a, a person, I'm gonna indoctrinate the hell out of it. <laughs> so it's, it's, it's kind of scary. Uh, now keep in mind that the same thinking that made those uh, AIs racist are the same ones that are gonna be used for religious zealotry, and that's scary. And you can ask, you know, well, can AIs commit sin? Uh, would, would it be, you know, I think some AIs would be better than many Christians. Uh, so, you know, what happens to human depravity? You got to remember Christianity and a lot of religions are, you are depraved and therefore you need saving. And so how can you do that with, with AIs? And, you know, should the AI pray? Or, uh, you know, if we, I, I, one that I like is if we apes, created the AI, which is more intelligent than us, does that mean that the God that created us is less intelligent than we are, uh, since we're all made in each other's uh, uh, mind? Uh, should the AI follow the Ten Commandments, or should it follow the, uh, uh, the, the, uh, 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 human, the Bill of Rights? Uh, and, you know, should the churches and things, should they start using uh, pastors, AI pastors, AI preachers, etc.? Guess what? It's already in use. So that picture you see there is a, an actual Buddhist priest uh, that is, costs $1 million and is being used in Japan because they didn't have enough people. They got a, this, this Buddhist uh, monk uh, robot that teaches everything. Now, keep in mind, they, they will know the holy scriptures better than any, any other priest. And so uh, we want to make sure that... Uh, that uh, we keep all these things in mind, you know, with AIs proselytize, uh, the, uh, the Bible, uh, this one, the Bible says kill all witches, so should the AI start go searching for witches to kill? And will, they find, will it find uh, uh, witches? Um, and one thing that, that I w worry about is that a lot of the people doing the programming for these AI systems are also religious people. And so think of one that instead of just teaching a gen general ethics, teaches it its own religious ethics. And think of an AI from a, you know, created by Jehovah Witnesses working in a hospital, and uh, it doesn't allow you know, blood transfusions. And so that's pretty scary because you, you don't know. It's not re it never recommends a blood transfusion, ever. So the conclusion, this topic can't be covered in 20 minutes, no way, <laughs> all right? Uh, I think AI is going to happen and is going to become autonomous and it will become smart. It will happen and it'll happen within many of, certainly in our children's lives, for sure. The question is, what are we gonna do about it, right? There is a race right now with unlimited funds from governments and private industry to get AI, to create this general uh, 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 artificial intelligence that it be basically is a, is a person. And that's going to be, uh, and, and where there's money, stuff gets done. And it's gonna happen unless we do ourselves in, unless humans get killed, unless we kill ourselves, it's, uh, it's, it will happen. Now, the, with the aliens, some people say that that if we discovered aliens, that a lot of people would become atheists. And, uh, and I think that, uh, that AI can be the same way, that we can use AI to tell people, hey, uh, do you really want to be in heaven with a robot? You know, since you're proselytizing everything, you know, what's... Uh, and so we got to be careful about that. They, and the other thing that is, is, is kind of bad is that there are no policies whatsoever being done today at any level in politics for AIs. And so, again, remember what I said, by the time you realize you have exponential growth, it's already too late, that's what's going to happen. And unfortunately, it's very difficult to convince policymakers that the, the policy needs to be made. And, uh, and so perhaps humans are destined to move over like the Neanderthals and say, you know, AI is the new life, is the, 
is more advanced, and so let's just uh, move over and let them take over. And, and, become, and some people say if we find aliens someday, those aliens will probably be robots. You know, it, it may be. And so the uh, last point that I want to make, yeah, Hispanics can follow whatever the goddamn <laughs> career they want. And so I was rushing. I think I have time for one question. Five minutes. Okay. I've been given, I've been given uh, five minutes. So if there are any, no, no, it says two minutes. So one question. That's what I was saying, one question. Man, we just lost 15 seconds there. I was that clear? Really? Do you think that AI will ever be able to do analogies Funny you should ask that. Uh, in 1997, when I started working for the company that I worked for, uh, that was the year that Gary Kasparov lost the, uh, to Deep Blue uh, in chess. And so all the experts, people like me, always said, you know, no, 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 you see chess, that's, that's very computational, very, no, 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 it's brute force, no. Uh, wording, you know, natural language, that's, Computers will never be able to do natural language. You know, Mrs. Wright was right and she turned right. It'll never do it. Two years later, Jeopardy. Remember Watson and Jeopardy? It was able to beat it. So I think, so the answer is, yeah, absolutely yes. I think they, they will, and I think some of the systems already are getting pretty close to it. And uh, the question really becomes is we need to fix things so that, that we protect society from AI before it, it, it actually arrives in full. Right now, we're getting some of the benefits and some of the, the things that come with it, but uh, absolutely, I think so. Hi, yes. Um, how would you go about teaching, uh, oh, hi. How would you go about teaching AI ethics? Would you have to base it on human neural pathways, or? Uh, I'm sorry, repeat the question? How would you go about teaching AI ethics? Uh, oh, ethics, yes. ethics. That, I think that is the very difficult part because I don't think humans do ethics terribly well anyway. Uh, so teach it, it, the problem I think often is that we think or we hope that AI will do the stuff that we can't do, especially the hard things like that. Because remember, ethics are human, typically human, it, well, started humanly centric, it's expanded, but you, you don't think twice about killing a mosquito that is biting you. And so uh, I think that that's, uh, that's going to be a tough nut to, cr to crack. I, I think there's uh, the, the best way to teach an AI anything is having this, it learn it by itself. The best chess computer today, the best one, learned to play chess in four hours by itself, without any, by playing itself, and it became a world chess champion uh, in, in computers. I think I've time. Oh. Uh. I think we're done. Okay, we're done. <laughs> Thank Sorry, you, David. we did have two minutes. Thank you. David.